Welcome back and thank you for starting your Sunday with us watching Arise and Shine. The Islamic group ISIS has been in the news for months. Who is this group and how do Muslim women in America feel ISIS is affecting them? We invited two prominent Muslim women on the, on the show to hear their perspectives. Joining us with their insight are Lena Al Husseini, the executive director of the Arab American Family Support Center, and Dr. Maynaz Afridi, who teaches religious studies and is the director of the Holocaust Genocide Interfaith Education Center. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank We're you. excited to talk about yeah. this. Um, as, as a Muslim woman, Lena, maybe you can start. Um, what about the ISIS situation concerns you the most? I mean, it's frightening, obviously, what's happening in the Middle East. For a lot of my community, we have relatives back home. So what's happening is very frightening. Um, having a terrorist group that, that espouses such hatred of everyone else, it's, it's just really, um, you don't know what's coming next. It's so unpredictable. So that's what's happening back home. Also here, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. When people hear ISIS Muslim, suddenly like all Muslims are maybe like ISIS, right? So right, you get a lot course, of yeah. uh, fear from us as Muslims. I, you know, obviously we're as afraid as everyone else, right, right. As, right. as, as foreign as everyone else, even more so. But and it, you, bring up a, you bring up a really good point because I noticed that ISIS especially is, is trying to recruit young girls. So ha why, why do you believe that they're targeting women? I think they're tar targeting young people. To me, I mean, I, I, I've always said I feel they're like a cult. Right. And I think they, they um, attract people who have identity issues, vulnerable, right? right. Like how cults usually like work. Like gangs in the Like thing. gangs right. or like That's cults in our right. histories, right. you know? So I do think that they target young women because obviously they're a bunch of men and they will target young women and, you know. So there's no significance to it. There's no like, you know, we think they're the most upset susceptible, you know. I think or, vulnerable, young vulnerable. women, vulnerable young men. I think anybody who would choose to, to go with a group like that, there's, there's an issue somewhere, right? There's, there's vulnerability, there's um, identity issues maybe. I don't know what it is, but it's the same, I think, the same um, dynamic as right. a cult. And, and Maynaz, let's bring you into the conversation as yeah, well. Sure. Um, what do you, uh, you know, it's also <clears throat> been popular with teenagers, not just mm -hmm. young women. I mean, why do you think uh, teenagers, uh, it has an appeal to teenagers. Well, I mean, I, I, I think ISIS does have an appeal, but I think we are looking at it as if it has a huge appeal, right? I mean, we have about, I, as far as I know, about 10 to 20 cases, um, some that are reported more widely um, in terms of people moving from the US, um, going from Europe, going from other uh, places in the world. I, I just want to follow up. I mean, I think one of the things about ISIS is that's scary. We mm -hmm. condemn it right. as Muslims. I want to say again, we condemn ISIS right. completely. <laughs> in case you don't hear me, but that's how I think, we I feel. I mean, that's an important thing to say because but, uh, there is so and many misconceptions. Yeah, and think, there's a lot of discrimination against right. uh, Muslims, especially right. in America. So right. How do you even deal with that? How do you, you know? Well, I mean, I teach this? Islam on a daily basis. And so for me to deal with stereotypes of Muslims is highly, highly uh, problematic, but also it's very educational for young American students who want to learn. This is their future. This is where they're going to be in 20, 30 years. They're going to live in a world where they're going to maybe have to speak Arabic. Right. Um, so these are very important issues. But I also want to say in terms of women is that teaching genocide, teaching the Holocaust, and also teaching Islam, I find that women are the most oppressed in all of these situations. Mm -hmm. They're used as a weapon. Right. Um, they're used as a pawn between internal groups as well as the West, Islam. And I think that is very detrimental for us women right. fighting not only the misperceptions of Islam, but also our right. gender stereotypes. Yeah, absolutely. Lena, do you think that there were more misperceptions or more racism against Muslims after 9-11 or now, um, given the ISIS situation? I think ISIS is perpetual perpetuating the, the stereotype, sorry, my right. English, something. I mean, I, I think a lot of people already have the misconception that Muslims are violent and that Muslims are against the West. And I think ISIS just right. feeds into people's fears. And that, the way it, it, you see it on the street, is people start discriminating against Arabs or against Muslims or against anyone who reminds them of anything from, you know, that's related to ISIS. So it creates... Um, it really is a problem for the community in the United States, and I think in the West, because we, re exactly like Mahna said, right. we reject ISIS completely. It's like somebody in the UN said, it's the un-Islamic non-state. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So how do you feel, <laughs> even too, about the girls, the girls yeah. in Austria? 
right? That, there was, there, you know, there was the, 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 the right. story of the two girls from Austria who went and joined ISIS. I mean, what can you tell us about them? Right. I don't know a lot about that story. Maybe Mahnaz, you do. But I just can talk a little bit more in general. Mm -hmm. I think there are girls that are going there, but it's yeah. a lot like girls used to go. Chase uh, after the boyfriends. Chase after right. the boyfriends. If you look, we had so many cases in the past of, of via internet. Girls would just run off to meet somebody and they will get in trouble. And I think it's more of that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of um, uh, um, having this fantasy of going to this new, uh, with this new group and, and living this life as a right, you know, right. jihadist or whatever it is. But uh, it's been glorified in some ways, glorified. I think, by so, the media. Minaz, what is, what is, what's the misconception yeah. that people might have, the most misconception people might have about Islam? What can you? That it is inherently a violent religion. Mm -hmm. It is not. Um, Islam means peace. We are human beings. And if we create violence in the name of Islam or Christianity or Judaism, that's our responsibility. And we have to be taken into account for that. Um, I want to just give an example, and I think people have seen this, is that the advertisements put up by Pamela Geller. Oh, right, right. yeah, we, we yeah. actually yeah. did yeah. want to talk about that. That's, so, I mean, she's calling it an education campaign, right? right. It's a and she campaign. spent, what, $100,000 So, on I mean, it, right? if you think Crazy. we're like savages, right. and that we want to <laughs> blow up the studio, or we want to blow up something, right. or jihad is really oh, just look, a call. Oh, see, we can see some of them right yeah. now. So, jihad is jihad. Um, I think these are the problems we have and that people walk by and say, oh, yeah, you know, those are those Muslims. Right. Um, or if women in, in hijab get attacked. It, it's very, very, very nerve-wracking for a lot of us. because. How we, does it make you guys feel to see these? I mean, they're saying Christians are extinct all over the Middle East except in Israel. Um, I mean, just as a Muslim woman, how do you feel when you see those ads? I mean, for me personally, it's offensive. It makes Absolutely. me angry. I would trust that most people would know she is offensive. What she's she's spew, uh, spewing hatred, basically, right. and, and, and hate mongering. Uh, but what worries me is somebody who doesn't know a lot and sees the ad, and suddenly in their head it's imprinted. All it. Muslims right. are like this, and then one day will do something against a Muslim. That's that's what that's I work scary. against, mm -hmm. right? right? And I have a lot of kids who go to schools, and they're, and they're, um, the kids with them in school might see one of those ads, and, and kids don't have that sophistication to know this Absolutely. is, you know, so, so it's scary, mm -hmm. because right. it does create It reminds rage. me of almost like what happened during the civil rights movement, when I was coming of age, and the signs that I saw, exactly. it's like the same thing, just it's now on a different kind mm -hmm. of people, but thank you to so much for, for mm -hmm. coming in and joining us, and, mm -hmm. you know, giving us some education. Yeah, we appreciate thank the you. discussion. Thank you, thank you. Well, next, you're going to meet an extraordinary woman who opened up her heart and her home to children when they needed it the most, and the results will astound you. Stay tuned. You're watching Arise and Shine.